Hi, so today I want to talk a little bit about a father's role and a mother's role inside of us. Father helps us feel stillness because we don't feel the urge to go get. We don't feel the urge to run away from. We're provided for and we're protected, whether it's a hunter-gatherer masculine or a warrior masculine or protector masculine. You know, the one who builds the house or the one who goes and gets the stuff or the one who protects us from other men or predators. And this is necessary for a construct where a woman is the protected, the provided for, the one being provided for, the one who's defended, and in other words, precious. The fleshy life form that can bring new possibility in life from a place of void, an empty space that can become anything with any man. And of course, there's compatibility and there's genetics. And however, theoretically, being able to integrate this concept. So the father is how we kind of see the archetypal male who is player, maybe is a good way of seeing this enchanter. A young man who's been rejected many times by his mother constantly and his criticism has built a, up to a boiling point will really want feminine approval and will go out and look one after the other at teenage women asking them out until one of them will finally say yes. There's a trope about this, there's cliches, there's memes, there's so much humor involved in this and yet we have so much to learn from that one because he's trying to make something of himself He's trying to fill a hole by finding a hole he can fill. So we may sexualize this, but he's got some sort of charm because he's resilient, he's robust. He can ask over and over and over and not take it personal. He keeps trying. It's worth it. He wants to make someone happy, so he needs somebody who he can impress. He will feel full if he has somebody who's not impressed and he can impress them. He will feel good about himself. If he has somebody who feels vulnerable and he can make them feel secure. Somebody feels afraid and he can make them feel safe. So his energy comes from filling her, he gets filled. This is the healthiest way to look at it. This leads to stillness. There's no movement, there's no chaos. She might be looking for something, she might be looking and looking and he provides it, he protects her. He gives and she receives and in such a way he feels complete. He feels like a man. The mother has the ability to be wanting to be made happy. She has the desire of a space of what's missing. She'll worry, she will lash out, and she will keep trying. She'll be a nurturer, a connector. There's a natural shyness there because if a woman is allowed to be expressing her needs, she will recognize that others don't have the same needs. And without a doubt, when we say women, you know, stop talking so much, stop nagging, stop complaining. I say we, I mean collectively, but it's like the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So for a woman to be in silence, for a man to be in stillness, they've reached a completion. It requires a counterpart. We can do this in any scenario. We can make our business our woman or a man. We can make, you know, what do I need or what can I give? And there's a timeless quality to silence and stillness. Once we arrive into completion and we feel we have something to give and something to get, we're able to come into the center. And there's many distortions that prevent us from being able to be silent and still. So whether one is identifying even as a woman with the inner masculine or one is identifying as the masculine with the inner feminine, any kind of distractions, any kind of stories, these result in interpretations of unworthiness. So we do find partners which perpetuate this struggle to matter, to be understood in the form that we were taught we have to represent. So looking at desires, these are neutral desires, to be a carrier of both the truth 
at face value and dynamically means to be able to trust our intuition, the inner truth, the inner teacher, so that we can stay silent. And, not, and trust that means in the other also, their inner teacher. It's priceless to have these boundaries where we trust that we ourselves have all the information we need to manage our life. From that place, there's a masculine confidence. However, at the same time, there's a feminine counterpart which is, I'll apply this appropriately. I'll make a meal out of whatever ingredients. I'll clean the house with whatever supplies. It's this ability to make something out of whatever else. So our desires require a feminine and a masculine component. Another desire, connecting to teachers and students. We have a desire to be seen for what we know, for our mind to receive credit. And yet, if we do not have somebody who can see us that we didn't actually impress them, it doesn't hit the spot. This causes a lot of insecurities in relationship when there's somebody who we're not actually feeling respectable. We haven't felt impressive, and yet they're so happy with us. We may look elsewhere. At the same time, if we are keep trying, this I gave the example of the teenage boy, if we keep trying um, to get that security of that we're enough and our mind is, you know, respectable and our problem solvings and our knowledge and it's never coming we're going to look elsewhere as well um, another desire we have which has a feminine and masculine counterpart is loving our own reflection so seeing ourselves in others but not othering ourselves like whatever we're projecting onto the people around us when we've really got a chance to catch up to ourselves we see it's the most convenient familiar truth whether it's a fear, an anxiety, a shame, a blame, a guilt, it doesn't matter. It's just something that I know how to deal with, that I already experienced, and that I'm willing to face again. I have enough sense that I can prepare myself for this. So looking for a sensitive nature in a man as a woman, or looking for a confident, capable core in a woman as a man, will allow for ourselves to love the parts of us that we might say the other should hold. Men like this idea of being composed and calm, but then a woman has to carry a lot of those emotions. And we've, most of us in this generation, have seen our parents act this out. And we recognize it doesn't work. You have to love your own reflection. You have to love the sensitivity in the other and not shame it. That's what's the inner experience. And you have to love the composure and aloofness and lack of compassion in the other because that's what's in us too we all desire to have ourselves bright and glowing to feel our cells are healing to feel our nervous system is wired correctly to feel healthy and fit this requires both rest and exercise for a woman who has to clean you know her whole body of any unwanted hair and has to get makeup and has to put the makeup on and has to buy beautiful clothes and has to buy heels and then strengthen her calf muscles enough to wear them and has to be able to dance and sing in a way that sounds good. It's a full-time job. And when is the time that she could rest? Unless she has somebody paying her bills. So for um, fathers to be not present and the mother does all this and takes care of a child there's no room for her to be the counterpart of a fresh new relationship. So single mothers are part of this cycle and it's not their fault because their cells cannot become healthy and glowing. And as the baby is inside of them growing, they may have a man around who's not treating them with respect, they're overworked. The baby feels I'm coming into a world of stress. And then during life, when a baby is around stressful, stressed parents or a parent missing, there's not enough and this is the feelings that get transmitted so women who are unsupported are affecting all the children and the neighbors children and the buildings and the communities and there's no one to blame so the desire is for all of us to have a safe place to live where we can restore ourselves where we have less pressure from everybody to be enough and where we don't run the risk of losing our options for men
by taking care of ourselves and not doing all those investments that take so much time and energy away from literally surviving, thriving, growing. And the world is shifting. There's a shift in the consciousness and it requires all of us. It requires men to stop examining and judging. And it requires women to stop worrying and overdoing. And there's this idea about when you lower the rate you're asking in a neighborhood for a house, in the real estate market, you actually drive the whole market down. So a woman who feels so low that she thinks that she's her appearance, her, her voice or dance, any of those, and that's what makes her be a woman that's worthy for a man to love her, is actually driving down the whole real estate market because now all women have to do so much more in order to be worthy. The last desire I want to talk about is maintaining body ease and confidence. This is the ability to move freely in the world, to respond to challenge, to breathe deeply, and to walk with our head facing forward, standing on our own two feet. So the inner masculine of this is that I can, I am, no doubts. The inner feminine is what if, what if something happens? And this is the mother in us. This is since we're little kids, making sure that we're, we're taken care of and clean. Some of us didn't get a chance to grow up out of this. And we ourselves don't actually like to worry. We want other people to take care of us, but we do sell our liberative qualities. We sell our ability to make our own choices, even what we want to eat, what we want to wear, what time we want to get up, where we want to live, because the person who's supporting us took us in the way that we presented ourselves. It was like a business deal. So with money management, in this case, feeling like there's a secure base, a safety net for eating healthy and not necessarily having to war, having to fight for every little thing that we lose all the energy to take care of our bodies and to and to relax and to pay attention to what matters to us. Now I want to talk about some of the blockages. And this is incoming suggestions to doubt or to hide. This didn't originate inside the person who has the desires. Those are all desires that all men and all women have and that we ourselves can complete within ourselves and that suit us up for the skills for a relationship that I mentioned. And now when we talk about blockages, and I mean relationship with collective community, each individual, each couple, each family, each you know group, and then where do these suggestions come from is when we don't feel we belong or that we're welcome. Whether we're too much light, too little light. And the only way to deal with this is to stop the lies. In other words, the white lies of where we try to save our face and be someone we're not. This is the pineal gland. In Hebrew, we say paniel, the face of God. And it's the ability to visualize our own self. And to see that when we doubt that we are who we are, we develop an idol self and this ideal of how we're supposed to be is a blockage the only way out is through is to face we are not that i am this i am i am not that i am and to allow ourselves to be the face of the creator in the world we cannot be dishonest about who we are without being blocked we will get incoming suggestions to hide or doubt if we only identify as the person we show on social media Next, memories of wounds. So, for example, somebody who wanted to use me for their pleasure but didn't want to pleasure me. Somebody who betrayed my trust, they made a deal with me, and then they changed their minds for no reason other than maybe there was going to be a way that I wouldn't be able to keep my part. Um, maybe somebody wanted to help but then kept giving conditions, and it turns out they wanted help but they didn't know how to admit it. Neutralizing these wounds is the only way to atone, to become all one, at one mint. The wounds themselves have a lot of information on what we ourselves were either had to learn the hard way or the easy way. Somebody else took the, the flack. I think it's you know clear to say that the other person looks like the bad guy 
for what they did to us in our story. It gives us a chance not to look at where we might set ourselves up for failure or sabotage ourselves because of afraid of growth and heightened responsibility. Nothing wrong with that, but to see why we want to stay small is because we want to maybe not be able to be seen by anybody who could exploit us again. Another is distractions. If we are not staying focused, we automatically go backwards because the world is enchanting. And as we said, women are often subject to many men trying to enchant us to say, I'm special, I'm going to be the good one. Women do the same thing. But why are we so vulnerable to being distracted? It's because we don't make a practice of being in the body. I heard someone say, when you walk up the stairs, you don't say, when your heart starts pounding, you're out of breath, you walk in many stairs. For some people, that could be 10 flights. For someone, it could be one or even a few stairs. However, you don't say, this is, I, this is not what it should feel like walking up the stairs. You say, this is what it feels like. And this is what it feels like to have emotions. They're information in motion. If we get distracted from the motion of inside of us, we're going to be looking for motion outside. But this is not fulfilling. And the inner, the inner landscape becomes even more chaotic. Next, memories of objects get stuck to image and name. Satisfaction might get stuck to something sexual or food. It may, we may have forgotten what it feels like to read a good book or to watch a waterfall. Especially with the age of technology, we may think validation comes from the phone. We may think even the word dopamine fix, you might actually imagine drugs. You might forget that a small piece of chocolate, mel chocolate melting in your mouth, taking a few breaths, taking a hot shower, you may have forgotten what it feels like, what relief really feels like could be just getting, you know, getting one thing off your checklist checked off, even if it's just brushing your teeth, um, taking a shower. Depends on your level of fitness physically. It really does. And understanding these objects are physical, their images are physical, their names are physical. We might call this, you know, a job. But actually, it feels more like play. And then the other side, we might say, I'm a really, I play the game of life, but actually might feel more like a death grip. Like if I don't do, I'll die. So even our self-esteem, we might have put on an image on it, like, a, like a, a bunch of arrows into this figure. We might have called upon these images to represent. And so self-inquiry is about cultivating a consciousness of why can it not be something new? And this is the form with the name and this we say is the re relationship with our creator is we take form for the presence are we willing to be present and not know all the words as if we're learning a new language again the language of our being of our life another one is forgetting our abilities this is a blockage it's very important to recognize that you learned how to walk by taking baby steps you didn't learn how to walk in one big swoop so bite-sized pieces is being able to rise to the challenge, it's doing something new. Another ability is resilience. And people like to, you know, say feeling victimized is, is the worst and being punished, tortured. And however, we forget that actually we're not being degraded or humiliated by not knowing how to do something. We're just learning how. And this is an ability, is to learn new skills. Changing our relationship with falling down we see in, in Judaism, we say a righteous one falls seven times before they get up again. The last blockage is projecting onto other. And this I touched on a little bit earlier when we don't want to see something in ourselves and how it's the most familiar story we have. And so we place it on someone else. And whether it's to avoid the negative feelings associated with being that way from either early life programming or continuous, you know, peers and colleagues in our social culture telling us their opinions indirectly or directly. It also comes from being a traveler in the world and preparing not only for the worst to come in others to avoid being hurt again. Once we heal, we become curious and open. So it has a lot to do with like, imagining a man telling you who you are. And it might feel good. But projecting onto the other that they need that allows for an unhealthy relationship. So learning how to validate ourself by being able to 
be open to who the other actually is, recognizing they too have been a victim of the society's desire to categorize everybody, the left linear mind, and balancing it and connecting the dots, who we who we actually are and who the other one is, can both exist together. And this isn't easy. This requires um, finding the weakest parts of your own arguments and the strongest parts of the other's arguments. And at the same time, it also holds space for the fact that we don't know the feelings that anybody else is feeling except as reference to our own. And even though we have neurons, mirror neurons, they don't tell us exactly the extent and heightened uh, sensitivity that the other might be feeling in their circumstances, whether it's joy and bliss or uh, loneliness and despair. So in projecting onto the other that they are despairing about money and that they need our help, we have set ourselves up to fail in the relationship. It is not sustainable. On the other hand, if we project onto the other that they are never affected by anything and they're very strong, we set ourselves up for an unsustainable relationship. Whether it's our inner masculine or inner feminine that we're projecting on the other or the repressed aspect of it so each of our you know our, our masculine that we don't allow ourselves to actually experience it could be the part that we are we think all men are like the father I carry with me and me or all women are like the mother you that I carry with me and me and these are also versions of my our parents that we held in place so that we could fix them when we had the tools so projection is not a bad thing again all of these are blockages that have to do with not being able to see reality and the light having an edge. So we're, this lifetime is about keep living at the edge from a stable core self. To stay healthy is to be able to stretch out to the edges and come back to the center. If our energy goes too far in any direction, as a traveler in the world, we may really stay small because of cognitive dissonance where we know that we're not living in line with our values and we can't escape it. The everlasting presence is with us. And I'm going to finish off with dreams that are valid dreams. They're not exciting. You know, they're not fancy, but this is a very high level of living and I want it to be explored out loud, everybody to write. After hearing this kind of system of looking at the world, now letting this practice guide us as what are our dreams? What are our actual desires? So having a new, fresh, clean home, what this means is constantly having a, a home that feels not stagnant, not static, not stuck. There's breathing room, there's a flow. Cool. So weather that's tolerable. The weather systems here represent the feminine, represent harsh sensations or very soothing sensations. So being able to do that means you're properly protected as well, even if you have to wear many layers of clothing just to keep your body temperature safely comfortable. This has a lot to do with serotonin, which um, is to do with temperature in the body, which also has to do with mood, appetite, sleep. Then family, tribe, community, and nation. Having a family, whether or not you want to subscribe to the family that you were given by God is like the best family you could ever have, even if they're extremely challenging. Whether you subscribe to the fact that, you know, the universe, our soul lines us up for our, for our corrections of the world with exactly the people who would challenge us the most. Um, whether you have a new family which is by marriage or by friendship, um, and then a tribe. You know, are you a yogi? Are you a Buddhist um, meditator? Are you a hedonist? Are you into BDSM? And that's, you know, what you consider a sacred way of channeling sexual energy and violence um, for oneness. Um, are you part of a community which celebrates all Jewish or Christian holidays together and otherwise, you know, goes off into the world and does your own thing? Are you part of a community which says, let's practice honesty in all our affairs of business? Are you part of a nation that believes in everybody should have a right to express their strengths and nobody should have to do the same work as somebody else as if we're all equal um, contributors? Like... Um, are you part of a nation that is all one color and therefore you could say we're all pigmented, we have something inside of our skin 
and inside of our genes, which has given us a culture of being part of the earth in a different way. Um, and any of these, whatever parts it is, is to have that, is to be able to have that, is a dream, to live your dream. I want people to be living their dreams and in joy and in bliss because of it. Um, and not the joy and bliss that um, is passing, but to be able to practice being part of a family, a tribe, a community, a nation, being able to practice being in sensible weather inside of the current system of your body and to be able to, um, you know, practice having a home that is, that's not just a house, but it's a home. To be in shape is to, again, a body in motion stays in motion. The planets are all moving. Even the grass moves in the wind. So we allow ourselves to be moving freely, to bend, but not to break. And the muscles that require us to bend or to stand. Financial independence and power. And this is not something that I mean only money. What I mean is not to be a slave to money. To look at this as not needing credit for doing good deeds with money. To look at this as getting genuine, like positive feelings from being part of a currency flow. From being part of everybody when we pay taxes or tithes, charity. Tithe is giving 10% of your income um, in order to unleash the the abundance blessings because the word blessing in Hebrew is the word um, increase then teaching who wants it not rushing around looking to be seen and understood and thinking that somebody has to listen to us and feeling so unheard and misunderstood and insignificant but rather actually being aligned with the people who want to hear and so we have to pay attention to who's actually listening who's responding and not going into those old patterns of trying to get someone who's not interested to pay attention it's a kind of spiritual violence, actually, to try to force somebody to give you their attention that they want to give to something else. Um, natural privacy and dignity and expression. This is the ability to dance the way you dance, to sing the way you sing, not learn all these choreographed moves, but to feel the spirit moving through you, to feel the energy of yourself and making containers for this in a way that doesn't have to be a performer necessarily, even if you are performing, but first and foremost, performing for the part of you that wants to feel safe moving so that as you move, things can move. You stay busy with your hands, your body, and um, expressing yourself through food, through cooking, and also through your words, through your feelings, finding a way that there's dignity in being exactly who you are. This is a healthy self. There's creativity, there's continuity, there's intimacy. Finally, to be able to have a higher learning, to expand the consciousness, is to transcend what is old and to gather up all the energy from the past and all the energy coming for the future and to find that balance by saying, I can abide with what is. I can be here right now, right now, right now, but also always right now. And recognizing the bite-sized minutes of time that we try to fill up with everything and kind of the precept you know, is being challenged by saying what precepts actually guide my life and what precepts do I want to live by and what values are going to set me free and also give me my mission statements for myself when I go move around the world so I can feel confident and um, my reasoning abilities and to be a scholar of whatever interests you, whether it's, you know, remote control cars or boats that um, are of a specific niche or whether it's something in Torah or in a scripture, you know, from another group, the Bhagavad Gita, and or Zoroastrian kind of philosophies, or it's art, different kind of art forms I mentioned a few times, you know, performing, so it could be singing, it could be dancing, it could be, um, it could be facilitating workshops for people who want to learn how to do, make pickles. It could be a bunch of um, motorcycle uh, individuals who are passionate about motorcycles or cowboys. Um, or cowgirls, or it could even be somebody who is, um, you know, not just having a nomadic traveling lifestyle for people on the internet to see as they do their remote job, but actually people who want to learn about cultures and they are photojournalists in their own private way and their job has kind of been, you know, taken away by all everybody doing that on Instagram. So maybe for them to find a new way to, to have their art shared and still get, you know, a livelihood and income. So that is what I wanted to talk about today. And I hope you have a beautiful day. And I thank you for spending time with me. And I hope that something that I shared brings more healing to you and to your entire prism of life where everything you see, like I mentioned, the pineal, that you look at on the, in the world with a new code, a new program. And it's empowering for you. And you recognize that that's what you are here to share with the world in your own unique way as well.